Hello everyone and welcome to the Monday, May 18th, 2020 Upper Providence Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, during this pandemic, the Board of Supervisors has been in regular communication with township staff and it has been monitoring all the issues impacting residents. Because of the social distancing guidelines recommended by the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the stay at home restrictions set forth by, the gov by Governor Wolf, this Board of Supervisors meeting will not be held at the normal physical location, but rather through this virtual medium forum for at least the next couple months. This virtual meeting was legally advertised and is being recorded this evening, and it will be uploaded to our website in the same location as other recorded Board of Supervisors meetings. I would like to thank all of you who registered as attendees for our second annual virtual board meeting. And as a virtual attendee, all of you will have the right to speak under public comment later in the meeting. You will see a raised hand symbol on your computer screen, which will alert or host that you wish to make a public statement. At that time, you will be unmuted and you will be allowed to speak for a maximum of three minutes. Consistent with our normal rules of pro uh, protocol, there will be no question and answer period. However, if you do have a question on any particular item, we will make sure that the appropriate staff member gets back to you with an official response. And this forum is new to all of us, and we ask that you bear with us as we become acclimated with this new format. Okay, and then normally for public meetings, we stand and recite the pledge, but it's difficult in this format, and I think that it would be appropriate for all of us to take a moment of silence in remembrance of all those who have succumbed to COVID-19. Upper Providence Township has not been untouched by this crisis, and as of today, there are over 171 township residents that have contracted this disease, 46 of which have passed away. Let us also remember to thank all of our local heroes that are on the front lines fighting this invisible enemy. There's medical providers, grocery store clerks, pharmacists, as well as our firefighters, police officers, and EMTs that are on the front lines every day to make sure that we are safe and have food on our table. To those heroes out there, thank you. And now a moment of silence. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the first agenda. Um, it is a motion, or it's a, the board agenda. Um, do I have a motion? Has anybody had an opportunity to look it over? I'll make a motion to approve the May 18th, 2020 board agenda. A second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. All right, public comment. We're now at the public comment phase of the agenda where our registered attendees may offer public comment. Please activate the raised hand feature in the toolbar and the township manager will unmute your mic. And the same rules apply as a regular meetings. You need to state your name, address, and keep your comments to three minutes. Tim, do we have any speakers? We have one speaker with a virtual hand raise. It's Kristen Troutman. Um, and uh, Ms. Troutman, you should be unmuted. Can you hear me? Uh, she's muted. The second see that she's muted. I can hear there you. you. Ms. Troutman, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, you're on. Hi, Kristen Troutman, 1320 Black Rock Road. Um, first of all, I, I am attending tonight virtually to say thank you for hearing our concerns and <laughs> responding. So Mr. Pearson, yes, that was my reason for attending tonight. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for hearing our concerns uh, about our quality of life with the firehouse being placed where it was originally going to be placed. And it seems that it has been moved down the road, the plan's been flipped and it's also been pushed back a little bit from the road, so um, we will have the parking across from our home, but uh, we've been assured that it's going to be well buffered. Um, so we do appreciate and appreciate that, and that was the reason for uh, our attendance. So thank I just you. Want to say thank you, Kristen. I want you to know that you know we'll do everything that we can to you know keep your quality of life the way that you expect it. You know, we've worked with you before in the past when you had trouble with the ball fields and 
we change the time and everything else. And we'll continue to do that if we, if it's possible for us to do that. All right. Well, we appreciate it. And my husband also wants me to give you a shout out for getting the compost site reopened. So <laughs> Two wins, John. Yeah. So, there you <laughs> go. Um, so thank you again. Thank You're you. Very welcome. Helene, uh, we have a raised hand from a Jack. What's well, Jack and Kristen Kraft. I'm going to unmute them. Um, Jack, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm trying. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm Jack Kraft, uh, 159 Woodland Avenue. Uh, just a, a quick question. Um, you know, we have the sewer work going on here in the uh, Reaver Road uh, area. And um, on Saturday, um, we had big, fully loaded dump trucks going like up the road to the site at about 6.30 a.m. Saturday. So I talked to Mike um, again today from the uh, sewer authority about it. And he said that uh, they don't have any kind of clause in their contract about like starting time during the day. And if building wins online, he might be aware of the situation already. But, but uh, I, I know they're trying to probably make up for the last time due to the coronavirus shutdown by working on Saturdays. But, you know, I mean, a fully loaded truck, like 56,000 pounds, a, a parade of them going by at 6.30 in the morning is kind of loud. So I'm wondering if there's anything the township can do um, to have them start a little bit later on Saturdays. Eight o'clock would be great, but if, but if we can get something later than six thirty a.m. Well, Jack, it's it, you know the they're being don't worry about them. They're being compensated. Trust me. I'm I'm sitting on the sewer authority for the lower lower Perk Valley sewer authority. They're being justly compensated for their loss of time and everything else. So they don't have to worry about making up time. Uh, as far as the noise that you're getting, I, Tim, don't we have an ordinance or is there somebody online here that can, you know, give me a shout as to what, uh, what, what the time frame is for our ordinance? Is it 6.30 or is it 7.30? Our noise ordinance. I think it's 6.30, but I, believe so. I don't know about the weekends. It could be different for Saturday. It's I, I can speak to that. This is Brian. The, the, the township's um, noise ordinance actually falls under um, nuisances or, or another section of the code. There's no specific um, ordinance set aside for noise. And it is rather dated. I think it was, it was a, a men, adopted in 1960 something and hasn't changed in any substantive way since. Um, to make that point, it speaks to the blowing of steam whistles and um, the use of phonographs. Um, However, to address the, the matter at hand, it doesn't speak specifically to construction noise, um, though we have enforced the hours of um, uh, noise violation that are in, in the code, which read from 11 p.m. till 6 a.m. Um, there is no further setback on the weekends. Uh, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to revisiting that ordinance and, and dressing it up, taking out the steam steam whistle language um but as it presently reads it's it's 11 p.m to 6 a.m seven days per week jack i'll try to reach out to mike um sometime tomorrow um I, I, again like i said i sit on that board and i'll ask him if he can talk to them about doing something to ease that 6 30 in the morning thing for you yeah mike and Mike was very sympathetic. He really is. He's been very responsive. He, he, yeah. uh, he just he just said that they don't really have any way to enforce it. So he said he was willing to reach out too. You know, but but just want to let me know. So I didn't know if you guys had anything that you could do. Hey, Bill. Uh, Bill Dingman is uh, raising his hand. Bill, you're unmuted. Jack, uh, I did check the contract with Alan Myers, and in the contract itself, it allows them to work from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, I'm sure uh, we've expressed concerns about this in the past to them, and I think they'll make some adjustment for that neighborhood. I mean, there's a lot of areas that that time frame works in, but you know, obviously the work down in that neighborhood doesn't work under that time frame. So I think Alan Myers will be cooperative. As John said, they've been compensated for their lost time for the virus issues. So um, I, I suspect they'll, they'll, they'll understand. Okay, so uh, again, anything you can do, I appreciate it. I, I, I really do.
My neighbor's will too. <laughs> so, That's not true. Thanks. That's all I have. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, Helene, we have a Charles, uh, I think it's Charles Stoll, Chuck Stoll. I'm going to put uh, um, unmute him now. He, uh, Hey, Chuck, you're on. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yep. All right, good evening. This is Chuck Stoll, 443 Lower Indian Head Road in Oaks. Uh, speaking tonight um, as a resident of Indian Head, uh, we still want to be clear that we oppose any changes to upper and lower Indian Head roads, aside from repairs uh, to the damage SEI construction has caused. We're united in preserving the character of our neighborhood, which is a rural environment. We do not wish to drive through SEI's campus to access Cider Mill home, Road from our homes when there is no light or traffic control, especially during rush hours, solely for the convenience of SEI. Uh, during the March 11th Planning Commission meeting, Mr. Vagnozzi inferred that some residents were likely bullied into signing the unanimous petition. Uh, we as a group were extremely insulted by that statement. Uh, the residents of Indian Head are the ones that are being bullied to change our neighborhood to SEI's advantage. Mr. Bagnozzi also submitted slides to support SEI's position that Lower Indian Head Road is a danger due to flooding. Neither SEI nor the township has ever been concerned with flooding here before until they wanted to take over our road. Reaver Road access to our neighborhood will not remedy the flooding situation for all residents. Some homes are cut off from Reaver Road during the flooding. So I believe that that negates the flooding argument. We lived here for decades. We know where we live and the consequences of the creek and accept the fact that we can take care of ourselves. We have always had access to Upper Indian Head Road via Woodland Avenue during flooding situations. But somehow SEI has been allowed to take that right away from us. I must question the motivation to be entertaining the idea of closing our road for SEI's convenience. They purchased property on both sides of Upper Indian Head Road, knowing that this is our right of way to our houses. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Helene, I don't see anybody else. I'm just going to scroll down. I don't see anybody else with their hand up. So I think that is it for public comment. Okay. All right, the next item on our agenda is the executive session report on May 15th, 2020. The board did convene in an executive session to discuss real estate matter involving the Pleasant Lane sewer project. There are no actions taken. Look at that blue out, man. Probably, yeah, except I knew Casey was going to show up the wrong right, Next slide. All right, the next item is our bill list, which includes the pay period May 11th, 2020 through May 12th, 2020, uh, in the amount of $459,831.51. Has everyone had the opportunity to look over the bill list? If so, I'll, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the April 11th, 2020 through May 12, 2020, in the amount of $459,831.51. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. All right, we have one set of minutes to approve this evening. Um, has anybody had the opportunity to look them over? I make a motion that we approve the minutes from the April 20th, 2020 regular Board of Supervisors meeting. I second that. All right. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. All right. Our next agenda item is reserved for public hearings. And we do have one item this evening that uh, it's being, it's the Comcast franchise renewal. And I know that our township manager has been working on a, with a special counsel, Phil Fraga of Cohen Law Services, who specializes in cable franchise agreements. At this point, I'd like to defer to our township manager and our township solicitor to facilitate this public hearing. Tim? Very good. Uh, everybody hear me okay? Mm -hmm. uh, good evening. Uh, this is a uh, public uh, 
going officially into a public hearing here. Uh, this is a public hearing um, of the Township uh, Board of Supervisors uh, regarding cable franchise renewal for Upper Providence Township. This public hearing is held pursuant to Section 626 of the Federal Cable Act, which sets forth the process for a franchise renewal. The Township's current franchise with Comcast will expire soon, and the Township is beginning the process of renewing the franchise. This public hearing is part of the preliminary portion of franchise renewal in which the township reviews the cable operator's past performance and identifies the township's future cable related community needs. As such, as part of this public hearing, we invite comments from any citizens who wish to speak regarding either or both of the aforementioned subjects. Franchise renewal is the best opportunity for municipalities to assert their rights with respect to their cable operator and to obtain important benefits in return for granting the cable operator the right to use their public rights of way. These benefits include, number one, a state-of-the-art cable system now and in the future, two, strong customer service standards, three, free services to community facilities, Four, better reporting requirements from the cable operators. Five, maximized franchise fees. Six, public educational and governmental PEG channels. PEG, uh, number seven, PEG capital support funding. Eight, legal protections of the rights of way and nine better mechanisms to enforce the franchise agreement. These are just some of the potential benefits available through franchise renewal. Um, citizens may address these items or any other cable related items that are important to them. We will now open the hearing up to any citizen comments. Um, this is one area, Helene, where we uh, can deviate from the three minute rule. Uh, we are encouraging any public comment, any questions regarding um, Comcast as we uh, go through the franchise negotiation process. I'll, I'll ask Joe Bresnes if, there, if there's anything else uh, I may have missed in this hearing on these hearing comments. No, I would just add that the, the comments from any citizen do not have to fall into one of the nine categories that you identify. If there's anybody who set, thinks that the um, current franchise agreement is lacking in some way with regard to service or what's being provided. This, this would be the opportunity uh, to take, uh, to mention anything of any kind. Uh, Mr. President, do supervisors get to talk at any point yes. in this hearing? Uh, well, okay. Yes, well, you, we have, we have, um, we have an attorney working for us and you can directly communicate your concerns and desires to to Mr. Fraga in in Pittsburgh. Oh, well here, let me just put can I put it on record on this meeting? Uh yeah. Okay, and I'll put on record that I'd like to see uh, Comcast uh do a uh this Comcast, right? Uh improve um make improvements to the plant inside the township whether it's cable boxes and wires hanging from telephone poles or any other um um equipment that they have that is in disrepair inside the community it looks horrible and uh, i'd like to see them address these types of issues that's my any, other, any other supervisors yeah i'd like if, if i might um i'd like i'd like to see if we can get the comcast there everybody's build down to something that's more reasonable Maybe that's an un unreasonable request. Um, or better package deals, um, if if that if that's possible. I'll I'll throw in my two cents, uh, Helena, as the manager. We we currently <coughs> have a public access channel, um, mm -hmm. government channel, um, but with rather antiquated technology that doesn't allow us. Um, any high definition type of feeds. So if you were to log on and saw our uh, cable channel, it still is the old analog feed. Um, I don't think any of us have the old analog television channels anymore. So we're, 
one thing I've asked is that we can try to get some type of high definition uh, feed into our township <clears throat> building as part of our platforms. That's a good one. Now, as far as this contract, is it the same when you, it's a renewal? Is it just a straight renewal or is there, is there just so many nitty gritty details to go over Joe that we wouldn't want to touch upon them here? But I'm just curious as to, has there been, what's the major changes in the renewal process? You, we, I, speaking for myself, and I don't think any of us have yet seen a final proposed contract, which has to incorporate, you know, input from the public from this hearing. When that comes back around for approval, the franchise contract itself, there will be a, um, generally there's a summary page on, on top of it that covers the uh, points that have changed from the last one. Okay, and that's all underway now? Yeah, well, I don't know if it's underway now, but it will happen at some time after tonight. Okay, and we're just waiting for public feedback. Is there anybody in the public then, Tim, that raised their no, hand? I don't, I don't see anybody. This is more of just an obligatory public hearing that we're required to have under, in order for us to get franchise fees and all this, we're required to do this public hearing. And this is just one of other, many other steps that go on behind the scenes, and we'll probably have more updates in the future. This is just one of those standard um, um, requirements that we have to show in the record that we've had the public hearing. Um, um, the, 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 um, as you know, as we get into, I, I get a lot of questions about streaming technologies. Does this come, does the new Netflix and some of the other online platforms come under this agreement? And the answer is no. Um, uh, we don't get any revenues or any franchise from, um, from those um, types of services. I have another question, Tim. Who are the who are the players in the game? Are we just dealing with uh, several? Are there other people out there that we can open the township to? There's only two players, John, and that's that's um, that would be uh, that would be the town that would be Comcast and it would be Verizon. Um, we do get two franchise uh, sources of revenue from both those um, entities. Other parts of the state, you primarily just have uh, one or of the one or other. Of those providers, um, this is strictly Comcast, though. This, this is, is just Verizon, Comcast. Right? We will have a, a Verizon franchise renewal coming back, coming up in the next few years, but that's not on the docket right now. And, and you know, I'll, I'll take some photos. Listen, I used to be in the business with 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 what I'm asking about. I'll send you all some photos of what I'm talking about, as far as uh, the, the the cable boxes being open and exposed and things hanging off of poles. It just looks it's terrible and it's their equipment, but as long if it hasn't doesn't have anything to do with hooking up to the homes, they really don't care. So right. this is our chance to have them fix things inside the neighborhoods. Which they won't, but at least we'll point it out. And our leverage is our rights of way. If they want parts of our rights of way, that's part of our that's part of our um, give and take with them when they negotiate. So we know we know the <clears throat> excuse me we know the revenue that they give to us. Do we know what their revenue is um, as far as the township is concerned? That that just may be another avenue to go at them with. Some of that information we have access to. Some of it, Joe, you can jump in. I think some of that's proprietary information. Uh, I, I think we're only we only have access to uh, certain revenues as far as basic services. We right. don't even. I don't think we even get any cut of any of the premium channels that Comcast offers. Um, I think it's primarily just the basic level of service. And I think the franchise fee is itemized um, on, the, on the bill. I know that's been a, something that's come up in other franchise negotiations is making sure there's transparency on where the bill, when you pay a cable bill, how much goes to the franchise fee, how much goes to other types of services. So, Cable bill itself can be rather overwhelming when you look at yeah. all the subcategories. There's a 90 story building about 20 miles east of here. That's, uh, that's where all the money's going. We're not getting it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or from the board members? A lot of these questions will be going back and then we'll, um, we'll start putting meat on the bone as we continue the negotiations nope we're good okay. 
Um, I guess, Joe, we need to officially, officially close the public hearing and I'll uh, turn this, yield the floor back to you, Madam Chair. Yep. Okay. Joe, did you need to say anything to close it or do I just move on to the next no, agenda? No, I think, I think Tim confirmed and it's being recorded that, uh, that no one sought to comment and, and that's, it's only to provide an opportunity for comment and there was none. So we're, we're closed with it and we're moving on. Okay. All right. The next agenda item is to accept resignations and appointments to the township's comprehensive plan subcommittee. Um, can anyone, I'd like to entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept the resignations from Robert P. Bellini and Christopher Volpe and appointing Marie Sadler, Michelle Beaver, Kevin Middaw, and Rachel Helm to the Comprehensive Plan Subcommittee. I'll second that. All right, I have a second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. The next agenda item is to accept resignations and an appointment to the Township's Park and Recreation Board. Can I entertain a motion? I make a motion to accept the resignation from uh, Rachel Shorter. I, I apologize if I mispronounce it. And appointing Maria Sadler to the Parks and Recreation Board. I second that. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. All right, next agenda item is resolution 2020-21, which authorizes the authorizing reimbursement for certain cash financed capital projects from the future proceeds of tax exempt obligations to be issued by Upper Providence Township. I believe our township manager has some background on this resolution. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, last, uh, a few weeks ago, we convened a uh, meeting with our financial advisor, um, bond council, and our township solicitor uh, to discuss the, the refinancing of our current municipal debt uh, from about four years ago, and also the issuance of new money uh, for additional capital projects uh, with 15 to 20 year life cycles. Um, on tonight's agenda is a reimbursement resolution for, uh, uh, which we'll be acting on later, would be for Project B Road Resurfacing Project, and also the replacement of Fire Engine 93. Our road bids uh, came in about $200,000 under budget, uh, which is due in part to the low uh, petroleum prices that you're seeing in the area. Um, the low apparent bidder is uh, Delaware Valley Paving, and uh, which uh, Bill will talk about later. The other one is the replacement of engine 93. Um, uh, the maintenance, this is something, a, a unit that probably should have been replaced two or three years ago and maintenance costs have far exceeded uh, the, the value of the vehicle. So uh, we're looking at replacing that and the, uh, the acquisition, acquisition costs through um, our state bid system if we pay it in cash without, without um, any long-term financing to the agency is about $640,000. So we're asking that we add that and um, some additional um, um, additional contingencies uh, to be included with a possible refinancing of our, uh, of our money issue. In order to do that, you have to pass what's called a reimbursement resolution. Um, one reason we'd like to move forward on refinancing, if you've been following the the turbulence of the markets, the, all the markets, including the municipal market, it's since been stable. It since has stabilized because the Fed, the Fed has gotten involved. But one of the good um, aspects of this is that uh, we're looking at 40 to 50 year lows in terms of municipal borrowing costs. Um, you're looking at um, you know anywhere from between one and two percent for long term issues and. We think it's an opportunity to take advantage of that, but at the same time, preserving our, our, what we have been using for cash preserves for our capital projects. So that's kind of a long-winded uh, explanation of why we're asking for you to act on this uh, reimbursement resolution. It's all part of a future um, financing and new money issuance in the future. Uh, this doesn't mean, this doesn't commit us to any course of action. This just gives us 
more flexibility in the future and how we finance things, correct? Yes, that's correct. It gives us, it doesn't bind us to borrow this, but it gives us flexibility because we're still trying to get the landscape where we, we uh, Richard and I are trying to get the landscape of what our revenue hit's going to be as far as cash. So the first area that we would like to try to preserve is, you know, hold off on that until we know what position we are in the future and paying this back. And, uh, and that's, that's our strategy at this point. Okay. I think there's a proposed motion in yeah. the I was just reading through and make sure I didn't have any other questions. Um, any any other comments? No. No, I'll move to authorize the adoption of resolution 2020-21. I'll make a motion to authorize the adoption of resolution 2020-21. A second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right, the next agenda item is resolution 2020-22, which authorizes an amendment to the capital budget to fund intersection and traffic signal improvements at Township Line Road, Township Line and Linfield Trap Roads. We have since learned that the state has withdrawn its green light uh, award that would have paid for a portion of this project. I'm recommending that we table this agenda item until our next June meeting. If board members are in agreement with that, uh, may I entertain a motion? I'll make a motion to table resolution 2020. I'm sorry, I'll make a motion to uh, table that item. Sorry. <laughs> I'll second that. Yeah. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Okay. The next agenda item was contingent upon the adoption of resolution 2020-21. Therefore, I would ask that we table any action on this bid award until the next meeting. May I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Right, the next agenda item was also con contingent upon the adoption of resolution 2020-21. So, therefore, I would ask that we also table any action on this construction services agreement until our June meeting. May I have a motion? I make a motion to table the action on the bid award for traffic signal improvement at Township Line Road and Linfield Trap Road. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. All right, this next agenda item is the award of road project B to Phoenixville-based Delaware Valley Paving Company. I believe our township engineer, Bill Digman, reviewed DVP's bid and found it in good order. Bill, can you summarize for the public what roads are included in this project and the estimated timeline for its completion? Uh, yes, uh, it's a 90 day contract duration for the project, uh, which would start when you get a notice to proceed. So if you uh, were to award this tonight, there's probably about a three to four week t time frame to do all the paperwork before a notice to proceed is issued. So uh, say four months from tonight, the project could be completed. Um, the streets involved are Brandon Circle, Anderson Road, Yoakum Road, Green Street, Anthony Wade, Wayne Circle, Van, Von Steuben Drive, Minuteman Drive, North Borough Line Road, and Rebeldis Road. So there's quite a few streets involved. Um, and uh, we're recommending award to Delaware Valley Paving in the amount of $613,457.50. Okay. Any questions? All right, do I have a motion to approve the awarding of project, Road Project B? I'll make a motion that we award ro the Road Project B to Phoenixville-based Delaware Valley Paving Company in the amount of $613,457.50, being the lowest responsible bidder within budgetary limitations. 
I'll second, I'll second that. Motion. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. All right, the next agenda item is resolution 2020-23, which extends the face period for real estate tax bills through December 31st, 2020. And I know that our township solicitor, Joe Bresnan, and our elected tax collector, Julie Mullen, have been working together on the best remedy for our township residents. Joe, can you provide a brief summary? I think Joe might be on mute. Let me see if I can get in here. Can everybody hear me? There you go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, sure. Um, the, uh, the, the, there's the, the one type of relief that was available was regarding the discount period, which is uh, smaller, less significant numbers. Uh, when you extend the face period, you're extending the period in which people do not have to pay a penalty, uh, you know, for being late, uh, which is 10%, which is considerably more. And so what this resolution does is it extends the face period by several months through to the end of the year. So there's no late charge for anyone who pays up until December 31st. If you're late after December 31st, then the penalty is applied to the entire period that went by previously as though this relief had not been granted. Okay. So if they push their bill, they don't pay it, let's just say from now, and they go past December 31st, they have to pay the penalty all the way back from now. That, that would be? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Right. Because otherwise you'd have, otherwise you, you'd have everybody, it would just go indefinitely and people wouldn't pay. Yeah. It, it's not a cumulative penalty though, right? It's just a 10% penalty for paying late. And that's what, yes. we're, that's what we're waiving. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Joe. Do I have a motion to authorize the adoption of resolution 2020-23? I'll make a motion that we authorize the adopt that we ad adopt the resolution 2023 extending the face period for real estate tax bills through December 31st, 2020. I'll second uh, that. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, motion carries. All right, the next agenda item is resolution 2020-24, which extends the township's COVID-19 emergency declaration. Is there any questions on this discussion? All right, may I entertain a motion? I'll make a motion to authorize adoption of resolution 2020-24, extending the COVID-19 emergency declaration. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. All right, the next agenda item is resolution 2020-25, which authorizes Richard Ritt P. Ritzel Jr. EMC to act as an agent on behalf of Upper Providence Township for the purpose of seeking financial assistance under the Stratford Disaster Relief Emergency Assistance Act. Um, any other, any discussion on this? Questions? All right, I'll move to authorize, uh, I'll ask for a motion rather. I make a motion to authorize the adoption of resolution 2020-25. I'll second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. All those aye. <laughs> right, I'm listening. I'm right over top of you guys. All those opposed, motion carries. All right, the next agenda item is for authorizing execution of easement and compensation agreement for the Pleasant Lane Sanitary Sewer Main Extension Project for 139 and 140 Pleasant Lane. Is there any questions on this? I'll move to make a motion. I'll make a motion to authorize the execution of easement and compensation agreements 
with the owners of 139 and 140 Pleasant Lane for the Pleasant Lane Sanitary Sewer Main Extension Project. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Right, the next agenda item is for authorizing the solicitor to file a declaration of taking for 748 Mennonite Road. Joe, can you give the public a brief recap on the purpose of this action before we entertain a motion? Sure. Um, whenever you're putting in sewer lines, uh, one, of the, one of the things that you have to do as a prerequisite to that is obtain easements from homeowners uh, for the space where you're going to lay the line out. Um, most of the time we reach agreements with the homeowners uh, or property owners on, on terms for the easement. When we don't, we have to authorize, um, you have to authorize staff and me to proceed with eminent domain to acquire that easement. Um, that doesn't mean that we won't still reach an agreement with those people. And in fact, um, you're not off telling me tonight to go ahead and file a declaration of taking you're only authorizing me to move forward uh, with that paperwork. And um, even if I do file the declaration, that does not preclude the possibility that we'll still reach an agreement with them and we hope to. I have a question. After we make this motion, would we hear back from you to take the next step legally? Yes, well, we're, we're, the next thing we'll do is, um, We'll, we'll make sure that our appraisal is um, sound in all directions. And then I will um, file, I would, I would prepare a declaration of taking, which has to be signed. And I would advise you that I was going to be filing the declaration. Um, after that, there's a period where some legal papers can be filed by both sides. And then if we still haven't reached an agreement, then it goes to the board of viewers, uh, for, uh, the county board of viewers uh, for determination of compensation. Any other questions? Okay, thanks, Joe. And unless there's any other questions from the board, do I have a motion? I move to authorize the solicitor to file a declaration of taking for 748 Mennonite Road, pin number 61-01-035-38-00-1 for a permit sanitary sewer easement and temporary construction easement. I'll second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. All right, agenda item number 16 is both a discussion and action item regarding the planning module and proposed benefit assessment for the Tindy Run Sanitary Sewer Main Extension. I'd like to turn this over to both Bill and he can explain briefly the purpose of this module and the proposed benefit assessment. Bill? Thank you. Um, a sewage facilities planning module is required under Act, what they call Act 537. It's required for every municipality to do proper sewage planning in their municipality to serve the residents uh, with, with sewer, whether it be on lot sewers or public sewers. In this case here, uh, there's 117 properties in the Tindy Run area that are currently utilizing on-lot sewer systems that you're looking to uh, extend the public sewer system to serve those residents. So as part of that, you prepare a planning module. That planning module has alternative analysis in it. It has institutional analysis. It has uh, project funding in it, et cetera. Um, Consistent with prior planning modules for, for instance, for Pleasant Lane and the Spring Mill uh, Lane project and projects that were completed in previous years, this module, as we prepared it, uh, follows those same procedures. It has a $10,000 benefit assessment um, for the property owners to pay, plus their tapping fee to the regional authority, the tapping fee to the township, plus their plumbing costs. So, generally would cost a, a, neighbor, a resident in this area approximately $20,000 to connect to the public sewer system. The 
$10,000 uh, assessment does not cover 100% of the cost. The cost for this has this project has a project cost of approximately seven million dollars. So uh, obviously, the 10,000 times the 117 properties would bring in you know 1.2 million dollars or so, uh, approximately of the seven million dollars. Uh, the rest would essentially is a grant by the township uh, for the public sewer extension. Um, so uh, in order for this to go forward, uh, for you to act on a, a final planning module, uh, you need to advertise it. And the advertisement has to identify the cost uh, that is anticipated for the residents to connect, i.e. the $10,000 assessment. Um, it also identifies that there is no mandatory connection. Uh, this is a voluntary connection process uh, by the property owners. Um, and we need to go out for public comment in terms of the residents. We need to go out for public comment in terms of the Township Planning Commission, the Montgomery County Planning Commission, the Montgomery County Health Department. So we want to make sure when we go out for those public comments, we're following uh, the policies that the Township want us, wants us to follow in terms of the wording that's in these, these documents. So we're asking for your blessing to go out for those public comments and solicit the agency's response consistent with my presentation this evening. All right, is there any questions? Mr. Thingma, as like as in other neighborhoods, there are certainly failing systems in these, in this group of 100 and was it 17 homes? Correct, we've been, uh, notified by numerous residents that they're over the years uh, that they're interested in public sewer in this area. Um, you're all, the roads in these, this, these areas are also uh, to the point where they need to be resurfaced. So if you want to do any underground utility work in these areas, whether it's Comcast earlier or, or yourselves, as you want to get that done before you have to resurface these roads. Very good. Oh, Bill, you said it was total cost is around seven million. That's correct. And 117 homes. So that if they were to be charged the full price of what it costs to put in, not counting their personal hookup costs, it would cost them sixty thousand dollars a piece. Is that about right? That's about right. And you're asking them to pay ten thousand of that sixty. Plus another ten thousand of their own personal hookup costs, correct? Yes. Thank you. And every other municipality around us does that, requires them to do that. Is that right, Bill? Yes, uh, you're unique in that uh, you provide, I'll call it a municipal grant um, for these public sewer extensions. Um, many municipalities in the area do not have the financial resources to do that for their citizens. I know that we have no way to compel folks to hook up, but there's nothing to preclude us in the future from raising that $10,000 tapping fee. Is there, Bill? I, I believe it would, Joe would have to answer that, but my understanding is once you set this benefit assessment here is that's what it is for these particular properties. You know, if you do a, a different project in some other year, you could have a different fee. We, we've already done that. We did that a couple of years ago. We raised it to $10. Okay. And we did it, we did it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Dingman, but we did it. It's kind of uh, going back to the 60s, right? We're, we're kind of keeping up with, with inflation. So, this $10,000 fee is similar to what the people paid in the early 70s uh, uh, you know, as a comparison, right, Bill? Correct. As public sewers were installed throughout the state, you know, in the early 70s, late 60s, uh, there were generally uh, state and federal grant programs available that would pay 75 to 80 percent of those costs. So the residents were only paying, you know, 15 to 25 percent of the costs. Um, of the construction. So this is consistent with that and that's that's what the township has done over the years. 
Is this? Um, is this oh, go ahead, Lori. Sorry, uh, Bill. What is the current rough ballpark cost of putting their on lot system, doing a new on lot system instead of hooking up to the sewer? I think uh, we looked at that a few years ago and it was just north of $20,000, you know, so it's probably in the twenty-two to $25,000 range. So the overall $20,000 is still less than uh, an online system. So what is, what, is, so if we're only charging them $10,000, how much does it, once they have that installed on their property, once, once they have sewer hookup on their property, how much does that increase the value of their property? Does it increase it by $10,000 because that's what we're charging or does it increase the value of their property by 50 or $60,000 because of uh, that's what it would normally cost to have that in there? I, uh, John, I'm, that's a real estate question or appraisal question, so I can't really answer it. So I'll, I'll let Joe try. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the dollar value increase to their fair market value uh, could vary greatly. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't attempt to say that we're, that that's what the, the benefit assessment is, that number. So if we put, if we put sewer in their properties at $10,000 a pop, it could potentially Increase the value of their property by twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Am I correct? I, I would say, I would say, based on experience, and and I was chairman of the county board of viewers for eight years. I, I would say it could, it could increase it more than that. Well, if I, you know, look, we're having the same conversation that we've had for the past three or four systems we put in, but it also is is a detriment to the homes because if if uh, I'm going to buy one of these homes and they're failing, then I'm going to get thirty thousand dollars off of the home because I won't buy it. I'll, I'll demand that they get uh, thirty thousand. I want thirty thousand uh, dollars buyer contribution uh, for my um, for this home because I'm going to probably have to replace a sewer. But if uh, the sewer is already there, the the value of the home, if you're asking for you know say five hundred thousand. I won't have that opportunity to to lowball you to get the price of my uh, sewer replaced. I'm not so sure that it is a significant increase. And 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 if okay, if I can ask, what difference does it make? Well, I would say this. Well, the, it, the it, it would, that, I'm sorry. Go, go Joe. Go uh, ahead. I would say this. Uh, it, it, I think you already decided as a board. You're not compelling people to hook up. So it, I don't think it's being said as though that if there's that increase in value, people should be forced to hook up. I think that ship already sailed. Right. I think what, you, what okay. you're saying is that the benefit assessment, that if, it, if the property value increases significantly, hopefully that's an incentive for people to voluntarily hook up because they're not going to go backwards in the value of their property and they're probably going to gain, you know, again, the percentage gain would partly be tied to the total fair market value uh, of the property. But I can tell you for a fact that it, there, it's not going to decrease the value of the property by any scenario. Right. I agree with that. Well, yeah. you know, it's, if I was, you know, being a township resident, okay, I'm looking at this and going, okay, well, Mr. Township, please come down and do something for my, put $10,000 in my house. So it'll increase the value of my property by 20 or $30,000. I don't think that that's fair. And that's why that I, I've always been against this is like, I think that, they should be paying a little bit more. I'm not saying they should pay the whole freight. I'm just saying they should be paying a little bit more. Can it, I just, bit. Yeah, but it, another way to look at it, John, is you've let so many township residents already with this program this way. And then you say, okay, the last 9%, we're going to change the rules. That almost seems more unfair, right? right. Like if I fair agree. or unfair, it's been in place for so long for this little group then I agree with Elaine. There's only a few systems left. I agree with you. Like then that would really be unfair. Like this is, I don't know. You could turn that same argument and say it should have been changed a long time ago. If it should have been, if it was supposed to be. You're, you are absolutely right. It should have been changed a long time ago. Right. And but if this was if this was a big piece of land, if this was a, a forty acres and and we ran sewer past the property. 
I would agree with you. That's a significant increase on the value of the property if it was vacant. Again, uh, these are nice homes. They're they're worth money. I, I don't, again, I think having a bad septic system is a, is more of a concern to somebody selling it than actually having the sewer there. So. I, we, I, I, I get your point, but I, I still don't think it's right to spend township funds to increase the value of somebody's property and they're going to gain a considerable amount of it that, uh, because of that. That's uh, Look, we've gone, you're right, we've gone around this before. Bring it up to a vote. I'll vote no on it. And it's like, we'll get through this. Okay. And well, I, I just want to say my, my concern really wasn't around the cost to the township. My concern, though, is we have a, a compelling public interest for people to hook up to sanitary sewer. I mean, you know, we know of neighborhoods where there are still septic systems that are failing and people let them go and go. We talked a little bit earlier this year about perhaps compelling folks at the uh, sale of real estate to, to hook up uh, to require sanitary sewer for any real estate exchange. Maybe we'll go back to that in the future, but I think we can go ahead and yeah, it wouldn't be fair to change the rules now, so. All right, if we don't have any other discussion, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the sewer planning module for Tindy Run and establish a $10,000 benefit assessment for the Tindy Run Sanitary Sewer Main Extension Project. I'll second the motion. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion carries. All right, we now move on to manager and department head reports. Tim, I'll turn this over to you. I believe you have some updates on temporary consolidation of polling locations and cancellation of summer camps and other upcoming township events. Yeah, just a, Helene, just a couple of uh, updates. I thought it was would be good to let the residents be aware of this. Uh, I think you did get it in your in your packets. Uh, first, uh, just taking a little bit out of order, the cancellation of the summer camps. Uh, we did, we've been trying to hold off on this decision as much as we could, um, but we've been try trying to follow the leads of other towns, trying to work in collectively. But we did make a decision to uh, cancel the summer camp for 2020. Um, we uh, were looking at ways that we were looking at ways where we could try to address some of the safety of the campers and the families and the staff. but. Um, uh, for this year, uh, we decided that safety was more important on this. Uh, parents of the registered campers were notified uh, via email that the camps were canceled, um, and they all of them have received a full refund. Um, the refunds were done in a timely manner, and uh, we were able to process them fairly quickly. Um, it's pretty much a seamless process. We haven't received any complaints. I'm hoping the board hasn't received any. Um, it is what it is. We're hoping for a better time next year. Um, we have not yet made any decisions yet on community day, um, although we're, we're leaning against having that. We're trying to look at some of the logistics. We'll probably have a decision on that within the, uh, within the week. And finally, uh, this is very important, I think, to all of the voters in the, in the, in the township. Of, in preparation for the June 2nd primary election, the county election board did vote to uh, do a consolidation of some of the polling places uh, in the county. And I put out here just uh, you know, of our five precincts, <clears throat> what the old location was and the new location. Mingo one was in the uh, VFW post. The new location will be uh, Upper Providence Elementary School. Mingo two, which was the, was at the Royers for Baptist Church Schools, now will now be at the Spring Ford Middle School Seventh Grade Center. Uh, Montclair precinct, uh, what the old location was Brandywine Living at Upper Providence. The new location will be Upper Providence uh, Elementary School. The Oaks Pro Precinct was here at the Township Building. New location will be at the Oaks Elementary School. And finally, the Trap Precinct uh, was at the Spring Ford Middle School Seventh Grade Center. Will be at the. Uh, I don't think there's any change to that one. I think it stays uh, unchanged. So um, we, we're trying to get the word out to residents. I know whenever we change polling locations, people get confused after a while. So. We're, we're trying to get it out on our platforms uh, for, the, uh, for the primary season. I think it would be great to have a sign at the old place telling them where the new place is, because these changes happen every year, and I think there's a lot of confusion. We'll look, at, we'll, 
try to work with the election board, Helene, see if we can do that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, the, the counties, the counties essentially uh, running this election this time around. A, a lot of our poll workers and uh, folks that we normally work the polls are, are uh, in, in, an, in an age group that uh, is particularly susceptible. So a lot of them are not going to work. That's why the consolidation. I'm hoping a lot of folks vote by mail. And, uh, but in any event, uh, the, these polls will be open. They'll be safe. Uh, they've got protocols. Uh, there won't be people at the doors hanging out. Well, I won't be at the door handing out literature and grabbing your hand. <laughs> so anyway, neither will anybody else. Hopefully. And uh, so anyway, we, we'll get through this one and uh, hopefully by November we can get back to something more normal. Uh, one last update, and I was going to see if Brian could unmute. Just give us a, a quick update, Brian, on the uh, Montclair alignment project. I know that's probably gotten off some of our radar screens, but that's moving, moving forward. Yeah, I've been working with um, representative from traffic planning and design um, to have a draft plan of that intersection realignment completed. Um, I expect to get something out to the board in the next weeks. Uh, some of you have asked about it in the past. I'm sure residents who are aware of it um, are anxious for it to happen. Um, so I plan to send that out to the board in the next week. And um, the other thing is that project is in large part funded by a grant that we received in the amount of $927,000. I confirmed with PennDOT because the Green Lake Go grant funding had been taken off the table. And I am told as of this moment that because that was from a 2018 grant year award uh, that will be continued to, to fund that project uh, and that we will still be eligible for that grant money. So uh, if I hear that that changes, we'll let the board know immediately, of course. But as for now, we're still marching ahead with that project. Brian, can we quick spend the money before they take it back? Spend it as quick as we can. <laughs> a quick question. Um, I don't know if Tom Broadbelt's on here. Are we doing, are we going to try to consolidate both projects for the repairs to Walnut Street along with the, uh, the realignment? I can speak to that, John. We're going to try to run them successively so that one rolls right into the other, but it would be two separate projects and two separate hey, awards because of the nature I'm of the I'm here. I just unmuted Tom, so go, go ahead, Tom. No, I would love to do that project. It's a big project, but I would love to do the Walnut Street project. It's going to be like three and a half blocks. I think we budgeted around seven hundred thousand dollars for that job and it's going to be a big job but i think it's very important that we get that done well i don't it doesn't it seems i'm hoping that we'll get at least started sometime this year brian well i yeah. have it john I, john I yes it for i think 2021 but it's really important to get it done you know, as part of this, and it, we can move that around as we need to. Okay. Thank you. If, if the board wants to do it. But. Okay. Uh, Helene, that's all I have for manager's report uh, for right now. Our next agenda item is consultant reports. I believe we have all our consultants with us this evening. Bill, the floor is yours. Do you have anything to share? Just a couple of items. The PennDOT Second Avenue culvert replacement project is moving forward. We have a pre-construction meeting, Tom and I do tomorrow morning with a contractor on that project. Um, and if we can report back after that, probably a more firm schedule as to when that uh, road closure would happen and our force main would be relocated and the culvert would be replaced. Um, I heard rumors today through our office that the H2O grant program that was scheduled for awards in July, of which you have an application in for the Spring Mill sewer system, has been delayed until September meeting of the Commonwealth's Finance Authority. So they have pushed that back. I guess that's somewhat consistent with what Brian has been talking about with the Green Lake program also. So. Uh, the state is delaying decisions on grants. 
the Schuylkill River Trail project uh, that you jointly did with the county is complete. Um, we issued a substantial completion form on that today. The final bid came, the final price on that project is $5,000 less than the original bid. So wow. that project did not have any overage in terms of the construction costs. The road project A, which you awarded last month to Alan Myers, they anticipate starting the handicap ramps this week um, for that project and then move into the paving aspect of it. They have a 90 day period to complete that project and their clock is running on that one. And we're submitting for the Ashenfelder Troutman Road grant application by the end of the month. That concludes my report unless someone has some questions. For the Schuylkill River Trail, what was the what was the final touches on that? Just throwing stone down? Yeah, there was some uh, springs, wet areas that they had to redo. Um, we had to trim up some of the erosion netting because the snakes were getting stuck in the erosion netting. So uh, we did some environmental cleanup on that. And I guess that was the final items. The railing down by lock 60, I think, was put in at the end. Mm -hmm. It looks really and good. Some I, paving, I, rest, paving restoration in the parking lot where they were mobilizing at the uh, Upper Schuylkill Valley Park area. Okay. Yeah, it looks great. I think that's a hidden gem for the township right there. So. Yeah, it looks like a highway now, though. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are using it, even with it fenced off. So, yeah, that was a nice project. All righty. Um, thanks, Bill. And Casey, you're next. Good evening. Um, just a couple things myself. Um, just to pick up on the line of grants, uh, you guys covered the Linfield trap thing earlier tonight. One of the things that we've heard also is um, pen, or there's a round of multimodal grants out now by uh, DCED that are due, I believe, at the end of June. That period is being extended to the end of September, and we're led to believe that that program is still going to be active. We talked about submitting under that program uh, for the Lewis and Vaughn intersection um, for engineering improvements. So um, I just wanted to let the township know about that. Um, the Egypt Road Adaptive Signal Project is um, pretty much nearing completion. The communication is now functional throughout the system and Econolite's collecting data. So that's being field tested um, for final things and the township is um, working to get final reimbursement for that project. Uh, GSK, their adaptive signal system along um, 29 is well underway. Their schedule has them finishing up in the next couple months and having that pro project be finished by August. Um, there will be a little bit of lingering on that project before I would recommend that the township would release any final funds um, because we would like to, the traffic to get to somewhat back to normal conditions uh, so the system can be tested uh, under those conditions. Um, we'll all be testing that one out. Yeah, I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all be up there racing each other. That's right, that's right. <laughs> I think those are the those are the main items for now. Um, if you have any other questions, I'm here to answer them. Anybody? All right. Good. Thanks, Casey. Yep. Jeff, Jeff's up. Is Jeff on mute? I don't see Jeff here. Let me see. Uh, Jeffrey Grace, let me see if I can unmute him. Yeah. Sorry about that, Jeff, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yep. <laughs> um, not much to report. The planning commission meeting last weekend went well for our first online planning commission meeting. Um, we moved one application on. Everything else is sort of on hold for right now. Uh, we have canceled the June meeting, the first meeting in May, 
the second meeting in May, excuse me, and we will be having the first meeting in June. That agenda will still figure out, but um, we have enough smaller applications to sort of wade through those before we get into anything controversial. So um, for right now, we're just sort of plugging away and reviewing what we can, trying to get what plans we have in the township as clean as possible so that when we do sort of cork the, the wine bottle, so to speak, when everything sort of comes through the process, we don't have a lot of technical issues left to hang up on or a lot of technical issues to discuss. It's really just, does this plan work for the township and can we move it on? Does anybody have any questions about any of the, the current applications or other land development in the township? You know, how backed up is everything getting considering you're putting things off that are bigger? It's it just not bad. I mean, we probably have, we have obviously the 172 Hopwood and 124 Yerkes. Those are on hold. More at the applicant's request. We just received last week new plans from them. So all of the us consultants are reviewing them to clean up those plans and to make sure that we're not getting caught up on, oh, is there a sidewalk here? Or, you know, is this floodplain line correct? Um, I think once we get to a clean enough letter, having them at a public meeting can really let the planning commission, and assuming it moves on to the board, give them more chance to talk about the substantive issues of it, not the technical issues, not the, you know, the, the little annoying things that we always sort of get caught up on. So I, I, it's actually, I, I think it'll work out fine for us. Um, a few plans, we still have some questions about Reber Road, the SEI plan that, that Chuck had mentioned earlier, that's sort of on hold. I'm not sure where SEI is with that. I was planning on reaching out to them this week. A lot of the other things are just really cleaning up plans and it's, it's minor technical issues. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Next agenda item is solicitor's report. Joe. Uh, the only thing that I have listed is the uh, manager's contract. This is, something that's been kicking around since January when the old contract expired and Tim has just been going along under that one. Um, the, the new contract is exactly the same as the old contract with the exception of his annual rate of pay, which is set forth in the new contract that has been shared with all of you. And at the outset, uh, back in the fall, uh, I, I had also circulated, Tim gave me with a survey of area managers to show that uh, he was that that increase was keeping him competitive, although not at the top of the uh, list of managers who are managing like size townships. So would we have to make a motion or anything to pass this or do we just you're just authorizing you're just authorizing uh, that you Helene to execute the contract. You're looking for a motion? There should be, yeah, I'm sorry. There should be a motion authorizing uh, the chair to execute the manager's contract. All right, I'll do that. I'll make a motion to approve the township manager's contract uh, for 2020 and beyond to when, Joe? How many years? It's, it's uh, till January of 2023, uh, right, Tim? This is the term of the next board. Okay, so I uh, make a motion to approve uh, township manager's contract from 2020 to the end of 2021, right? 2021. It's a it's a contract for 2020 and 2021. So right. next would actually be uh, the, yeah the re it's the rear meeting of of the fall of the next January 2022. Right. So. Right. Yep. Okay, that's my motion. I'll second it. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Anything else, Joe? No, that's it. Thank you, Helene. Sure. Uh, this now brings us to supervisors meeting or uh, comments. Do we have any fellow board members? Anything you'd like to share? Well, I'd, I'd just like to, again, you know, what I, I said well, we, at the beginning of the meeting, we talked about uh, first responders, medical personnel, grocery store clerks, and all those folks that are out there still working. 
while we're still under uh, these mitigation uh, procedures. I appreciate the folks in the township that are following the rules. Uh, you know, I, I was lucky to sit in this past week on a Senate um, hearing, a PA Senate hearing about long-term care facilities. And we have one in our township that was struck extremely hard by COVID-19. And I think that's why I was invited. It was it was heart-wrenching. We, we had folks from the homes, from the uh, VA home in Southeast PA, and folks who had, had lost uh, parents and, and relatives in these facilities. And uh, I just want to remind everybody that, you know, the grocery store, the gas station, uh, Wawa, all the places you go are the places where our firefighters, our doctors, our nurses, uh, our teachers in the fall. And God, I hope the schools are open. I know everybody does in the fall. So let's continue to follow the, the guidelines and, and continue to use good sense to protect ourselves, uh, the folks we're calling heroes on the front line and, and uh, our community. And uh, if you see me in the grocery store, this is what I'm going to look like. So. <laughs> I'm <gonna> look. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Anybody else? Laurie, a recommendation for a book? I do. I have several. One is uh, When Women Ruled the World. When was that? Uh, <laughs> in ancient Egypt, by the way. There is a nice. profile of six different um, queens of Egypt. And also, I would recommend anything written by Louise Penny. They're, they're just phenomenal books. Nice. So that's it for me. Anybody else? No, ma'am. All right, um, move on to uh, upcoming events. Um, Board of Supervisors next regularly scheduled meeting will be Monday, June 15th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Its July meeting is scheduled for Monday, July 20th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Both meetings will be virtual. Uh, the Planning Commission meeting schedule for, is for next Wednesday, May 27th, has been canceled. The June 10th meeting is still on. Uh, the Park and Recreation Committee meeting is scheduled for May 20th, 2020 at 6 p.m. And the Comprehensive Plan Subcommittee that was scheduled for this Monday, May 20th has been canceled. Future dates have not yet been announced. Uh, the Municipal Authority meeting is scheduled for June 4th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Uh, and this brings us to the end of the meeting. Uh, do I have a motion for adjournment? I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 What was opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night. Thank you for joining us for a meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Take good care. Night. Good night.